Surely goodness and mercy will keep us in the house. Amen. Let's, let's pray. Father, we just want to thank you. Just want to give you glory this morning. What an awesome God. We just love you, Lord. We just want to thank you. And even as we, Lord, meditate upon your word, Father, enable us to see your word as a love letter from our Father to his children. Father, behind every word, oh Father, let us hear the heartbeat of the Father and the cry of the elder brother. For you said in your word all day long, Father, you stretch forth your hands to a rebellious and a godless people. And I pray, Lord, none of us will be in that category, oh Lord. We will run to your embrace. Even though you afflict us, even though you chastise us. As David says, we will run into the hands of God. We will fall into the hands of God for great is his mercy. And therefore, this morning, even as we meditate upon your word, Father, enable us to hear the voice of the spirit. Even beyond the voice of man and the voice of the letter, of the, of the sound of the letter, enable us to hear the voice of the spirit, the heart cry of the father. And the passion and the zeal of the elder brother for his church. To that, to that end, I pray that you would anoint the speaking and the hearing of today's word. We thank you. We praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. All scripture is God breathed. But what does scripture talk about? It says in John's Gospel, chapter 5 in the NIV, you study the scripture diligently. But that is one of the, one of the things that we need to do. Study the scripture diligently because you think that in them you have eternal life these are the very scriptures that testify about me this testify about God that is testify about Jesus yet you refuse to come to me that you may have life you see it says you study the scriptures diligently because in them you think that you have eternal life uh, these are the very scriptures that testify about me Yet you refuse to come to me that you may have life. The whole purpose of the study of the scriptures, hopefully diligently, is to search the scriptures and to find the testimony of Jesus Christ. That is him. And then after we find the testimony of Jesus Christ, that we run, run to him and find what? Life. This is essentially the process of learning the word of God. You just don't read the word of God because our word is not like, Quran. Okay. The Quran says, I mean, the Muslims say that their, that their Quran is the infallible word of the eternal tablets of stone. It is engraved in the eternal tablets of stone there. And not even a yacht or a tittle has been changed. That's what they say. But unfortunately, it's all been changed. And they don't know. But the point, the, point, the, the reason why it has not, because the, the reason why they don't have the hope is because they don't have a person who inspires the word. We have a God who does not change. And the scriptures talk about that God who do, do not, does not change. The word which became flesh and dwelt among us and we beheld his glory. Okay. Now we also have the infallible word. Hmm. But it's not the text. It's not the letter. It is the person. Amen. And therefore he says, come to me. Matthew chapter 11 verse 28, come to me all you who labor and are heavy laden and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me for I am gentle and lowly in heart. And you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Come, come to me. Why? Why should we come to him? <clears throat> Romans chapter 3. It says when you study the scriptures, everything about the scriptures testify about God it says in verse 21 but now the righteousness of God apart from the law is revealed being witnessed by the law and the prophets you see the law and the prophets okay and that's exactly what the disciples when they found Jesus that is a testimony that they had in John's gospel chapter 1 this is what Philip tells Nathaniel the following day, Jesus wanted to go to Galilee and found Philip and said to him, follow me. Now Philip was from Bethsaida, the city of Andrew and Peter. And Philip found Nathanael and said to him, we have found him 
of whom the Moses in the law and also the prophets wrote, who? Jesus of Nazareth, the son of Joseph. You see, we found him. He's the Messiah. Our search is over. Okay. And Nathaniel said, can anything could come out of Nazareth? And you know what he said? Don't have to keep, believe me. The words that I speak come in. See? That's the infallible word. The person of Jesus Christ. One of the, my favorite verses in, in the Bible is found in 1 Peter chapter 1. It's verse 20, 12 onwards. To them it was revealed. This is talking about the, pro, the prophets of old who, who, inspired, who were inspired by the Holy Spirit. Not to themselves but to us. They were ministering the things which now have been reported to you through those who have preached the gospel to you by the Holy Spirit sent from heaven, things into which the angels desire to look into. You remember the mercy seat you have, two angels face to face with each other and trying to look into what is happening there. The tabernacle, tabernacle stands for Jesus Christ and looking at the mystery. But those people in the old covenant who tried to look into the holy place, I mean to the, into the tabernacle, what happened to them? They died. They died. So, so what, is, what, does it, what does it tell me? You know, it tells me this. You know, when we read the Bible, okay, even the New Covenant and New Testament and the Old Testament, everything you have, you have the story of Jesus writ in the, in, the, in, the, in, the, in, the, in the pages of Scripture. Everything points to Jesus. All of it in the Old Testament was a shadow. And the substance is Jesus Christ. A lot of people get, I told you, you know, we have the picture of our, you know, the parents give you a, those days, at least in those days when there was no Instagram and, uh, and all this Insta messenger, the bridegroom's photo used to be given to the bride. And was Tadu Naraju? Iroju, no? Raju, okay. So they look at the bridegroom and you know, he says, this bridegroom of yours, highly educated, lives in the United States and he has fallen in love with you. And he's come to marry. He's coming to marry you. A fantastic guy. All the good qualities that you're looking for is in this person. And he gives you the photo. And one day, uh, the bride, the bridegroom gives a surprise to the to the bride's family, and he comes at least 15 days in advance. And this girl is, you know, is she's in La La Land. She's looking at the picture of the bridegroom, and she's engrossed. And this person comes and taps her on the back and she says, don't disturb me. <laughs> I'm having a great time with my bridegroom-to-be. He taps on the back, don't disturb me, she said. That's exactly how many people are. Oh, many people are. The bridegroom is already here. The substance is already here. We are look, still looking at the what? At the shadow. Okay. So when we read the Bible, we don't look in those eyes. We look it in the eyes, through the eyes of the old, of, of the new covenant. As one man of God said, the Old Testament is the New Testament concealed. And the New Testament is the Old Testament revealed. And what is a revelation? It is a mystery of the gospel. The mystery of the gospel which is hidden from ages. It was, it was it, uh, the word in, in Greek is apocalypto, which means was, was hidden and now it has been revealed. You know, like, you know, where many people, they, uh, when they, uh, they serve on the table, no, they put a lid on, on top of it so that the aroma doesn't go out. Okay. So what are, what are you expecting for today's uh, lunch or dinner, when you invite people, we just put the thing on the... Oh. Then when you, you just un, when you just lift up the lid and you say, wow, fish curry and what have, you, what have you. It's like that, no? God has revealed Jesus, that heavenly bread. The tasty heavenly bread. Today we want to look at one such passage in the New Testament and uh, unpack it in the Old Covenant. New Testament, unpack it in the Old Covenant. That everything points to Jesus. Hebrews chapter 6, let us look at that particular passage, Hebrews chapter 6, very dangerous chapter to read, okay, but I'm not going to look at the dangerous verses today. Verse 18 onwards, that by two immutable things in which it is impossible for God to lie, we might have strong consolation who have fled for refuge. Got that? Fled for refuge. You've seen that? Underlined in your Bibles. Fled for refuge, if you have a Bible. To lay hold of the hope that is set before us, this hope we have as an anchor of the soul, both sure and steadfast, which endures, which enters the presence behind the veil. 
where we have a forerunner, where the forerunner has entered, even Jesus, having become a high priest forever, according to the order of what? Melchizedek. Now, we have several things over there, but I just want to look at this one particular word. Fled for refuge. By the way, it's one word in the Greek, which is rendered in English as fled for refuge. Fled for refuge. Where should we flee for refuge this morning? Who should flee for that refuge? What is this place? It's a question that we need to ask. Joshua chapter 20, and we will look at what this place is. We'll look at the whole chapter and try to draw out some lessons this morning. Joshua chapter 20, and reads from, reading from verses one, verses 1 onwards. Then Joshua, then the Lord said to Joshua, Tell the Israelites to designate the cities of what? Refuge. You see that? As I instructed you through Moses, so that anyone who kills a person accidentally and unintentionally may flee there and find protection from the who? From the avenger of blood. When they flee to the one of these cities, they are to stand in the entrance of the city gate and state their case before the elders of the city. Wow. Then the elders are to admit the fugitive into their city and provide a place for them to live among them. If the avenger of blood comes in pursuit, the elders must not surrender the fugitive. Who? Oh. The elders should not surrender the fugitive. Because the fugitive killed their neighbor unintentionally and without malice aforethought. They are to stay in the city until they have stood trial before the assembly and until the death of the high priest. Wow, that is interesting. Who is serving at that time. Then they may go back to their own home in the town from which they fled. The point is therefore, you have this story. Um, I mean, this is a case where a person accidentally kills somebody. Okay. For some reason. It's what we call in, uh, in, uh, in legal terms, I think it's called manslaughter. It's not murder. It's called manslaughter. Like, for example, you uh, accidentally kill somebody on the main road when you, when you, uh, because of an accident, he dies. And you, because you killed, uh, just because uh, you did not uh, intend the murder, it was not premeditated, what you can do if you realize that by accident you killed this, this particular br uh, brother or sister, by accident you did it, and you realized what you have to do is, you have to flee. You can't stay there. If you don't flee to the, to the city of refuge, there is an immediate kin, the brother or the father or the immediate kin, who, who, whom we call the kinsman redeemer, he's got every right to avenge the blood of the person whom you have killed. Now just imagine, I mean, and this, uh, this is what Spurgeon gives a beautiful il illustration. Just imagine a guy who's, who's like, you know, he's, he's in the field and uh, he's, he's like, or he's playing with, you know, uh, stones. No, I remember when I was coming one day from IIIT, I, st I had a, it was a brand new car that I bought. It was like five months or three months, four months old. I was driving down from IIIT towards uh, uh, Gachiboli, I mean, uh, the main road, the, towards Tolichoki, very fast. And, and there's a kind of a small intersection over there. And I found, I found this lady on the, on the footpath, okay? Not the footpath, the divider, right? The divider is almost very broad, right? And this lady, or she was really mad at somebody. What she was doing was taking stones and throwing it at that person, not even thinking about the traffic. And I was going very fast and I was looking at this lady. And she aimed straight at my car. Okay. <laughs> it's a straight at my car. Thankfully, it just hit, did not hit my windshield or the other thing. It just uh, hit my uh, hit my the side side of the car and just gave a small dent. Then I said, "Lady, you could have killed me." Okay. okay, intentionally or unintentionally, you could have killed me. Something like that. I mean, just giving you an example. So this guy, let's imagine now this guy dies on the road, and this you know what happens, right? When the when the when you see accidents on the road, the driver, you know what he does. He flees, he abandons the car and he runs for his life. Most of the time it happens. Am I right, uh, uh, crime reporter? Yeah, exactly, you know. You have to search for him. So just imagine this guy over here. This guy murdered or killed somebody accidentally and he realizes, Arre Baba, kya ho gaya? And his brother is also working in the field now. He looks at 
what did you do to my brother are in the name jeledra are this is not intentional and you start running for your life okay and run 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 you're running for your life and this fellow because he wants to catch you he calls for a horse and you don't have a horse and he is hot in pursuit you know what it says the bible says the city of refuge has to be accessible it has to be very close and the road to the city of refuge has to be very clean every year they have to maintain the road to the city of refuge so that the person who accidentally kills a person can flee to the city of refuge and you know what also is mentioned in the details you can see that in numbers chapter 35 uh, deuteronomy chapter 19 and joshua chapter 20 three uh, three passages on the of the city of refuge you know what it says the levites are supposed to put 2000 yards at the edge of the town 2000 yards okay they have to prepare as 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 suburbs so this is a city of refuge you have to get into the city but the suburbs have to be extended so that the guy even if he comes and touches the suburb the avenger of blood cannot touch him so that is how accessible the city of refuge has to be to the person who's fleeing who killed somebody accidentally now the point therefore is who is this avenger of blood i, I remember <laughs> if you read the pilgrim's progress right <laughs> beautiful so christian is he finishes his battle with apollyon and he's going further and then he sees uh, faithful there faithful is running and he says hey wait for me and you know what faithful says don't stop me the avenger of blood is behind me where is he running where is he running the city of refuge so the point therefore is who is the avenger of blood who says this fellow deserves to die even though he unintentionally what killed that person okay let us see who that avenger of blood is <clears throat> it says this is romans chapter 3 by the way i didn't put it romans chapter 3 verse 19 onwards romans chapter 3 <sighs> let me just put it okay so that you know this is romans chapter 3 okay it says this is romans chapter 3 All right, there you go. Romans chapter three, verse nineteen onwards. We know that whatever the law says, it says to those who are under the law, okay, that every mouth may be stopped. Every mouth may be stopped. Now look at the wordings over here. You should understand that the New Testament writers were completely saturated by the law, and in the law they saw Christ. So when they even when they were penning words, they were literally penning the New Test, the Old Testament thoughts. Look at what it says. Now we know that whatever the law says, it says to those who are under the law that what every mouth may be stopped, and the, all the world may become what what guilty. You know what the word for guilty is? It is only used once in the entire New Testament. The one word, hypodokino, if I'm right, which means under the avenger. Under the avenger. Only once. Under the avenger. You become guilty before who? Before God. Therefore, by the deeds of the law, no one will be justified in his sight. For by the law comes the what? the knowledge of sin so in other words <laughs> who is the who is the avenger of blood the law what does the law say unintentionally i did it doesn't matter you still are guilty of breaking the law for example you say there is no gravity i don't believe in the existence of gravity and to prove this point i'm going to jump from the window and i'm going to fly what is going to happen you will not prove that the not no existence of gravity you will actually prove through your fall gravity exists oh but i didn't know that's what you know we have to teach the children no they're forever falling for them they are always in the sky they have to learn the hard way there is gravity if they fall did they fall they'll get hurt 
it, right? I, I remember when Abigail, Abigail was right there, six months old. We put her on the bed. She was just flipping those days. And we were very intensely discussing in the kitchen. Three, two, one, thup! What happened? Abigail fell. But she, doesn't, she does not know that gravity does not exist. Can gravity be merciful? No. Oh, hey, small child, let me just push it like that. No, it's not going to happen. You know? And the next time I put Abigail, we don't learn as parents sometimes. No, we just put, I put Emmanuel like that in the, in the, in the, we had a basket those days. Okay. And just near the edge of the, uh, of the sofa. And I was just tying my lace. And I didn't see the, the cradle or whatever it is, the crib, no? I didn't see it. I was tying my lace. Dub! Twice. My wife said, oh, what happened to my baby? No. So we cry. They, babies cry. We cannot tell the baby, Baba. This is gravity. You will fall. We cannot also tell gravity, gravity, can you have mercy? No. You see, the law, the law is the avenger and he's running after your life. We all, what? Now we know that whatever the law says, it, has, it, is, it says to those who are under the law. So that what? Every mouth may be what? Stopped and the whole world be guilty before God. For by the deeds of the law, no man is justified before God. Everybody is under the, you have to flee from the who? From the avenger of blood. He's after you. Look at what John the Baptist has to say. Look at what John the Baptist has to say. Okay, Matthew chapter 3. We know this verse very well. Matthew chapter 3. Uh, notice, notice the wordings that he uses. Okay. But when he saw many of the Pharisees and the Sadducees coming to the baptism, to his baptism, he said to them, brood of vipers. What? Who has warned you? To flee from the Wrath to come. There is a wrath which is coming and you have to flee from it. Baba, run from the avenger of blood. You broke the law. You are the Sadducees. You think you are Sadducees and you are Pharisees and you think that you kept the law. No, no. The avenger of blood is after you. Okay. And you, when you look at Pharisees and Sadducees, you think that they are normal people? No. Look at what one of the Pharisees has to say about himself. The Pharisee of all the Pharisees. The benchmark Pharisee. Okay. The benchmark Pharisee. Philippians chapter 3. This is Paul. Though I might have confidence in the flesh... If anyone else thinks he may have confidence in the flesh, I more circumcised the eighth day of the stock of Israel, the tribe of Benjamin, a Hebrew of Hebrews, concerning the law, a uh, Pharisee concerning zeal, persecuting the church concerning the righteousness of the law. Blameless? Shucks. And you know what he has to say when he understands the law? Look at what he says in Romans chapter 7. What shall we say then? Is the law sin? Certainly not. On the contrary, I would not have known sin except through the law. For I would not have known what covetousness is unless the law said, Thou shalt not covet. And you know what it says? Next verse. But sin taking opportunity by the commandment produced in me all manner of sin. For apart from the law, sin was dead. I was alive once without the law. But when the commandment came. You know what the meaning of commandment? Come means what is commandment coming? Ardhamayindi. Balbelgindi. That's what it means. Okay. You know when uh, Isaiah said, Woe are you? Woe are you? Woe are you? Woe are you? Then he went to the temple. And he looked at the holiness of God. And you know what he said? Woe is me. What happened? The commandment came. That is what Mary, I understood. No. That's what Job said. I am absolutely righteous. And then he saw God and what happened? Commandment came. <laughs> he understood the requirements of the Lord. He says, for apart from the law, sin was dead. I was once without the law alive. But when the commandment came, sin revived. I died and verse 24. Oh, wretched man that I am who shall save me or deliver me from this body of death. So where did he, where did he run? He ran, he ran to Calvary, right? You know, there was a, his name is William R. Neville. Neville, okay? His name is Neville. He wrote a song at Calvary. You know, how many of you know this song? At Calvary. Look at what it's, one of the stanzas of, the, of the, one of my favorite songs. By God's word, at last, my sin, I learned. Then what happened? Then I 
trembled at the law i spurned <laughs> okay till my guilty soul imploring turned what to calvary you see to calvary you see when you understand the word of god you study the word of god you study every word you know what happens you will realize how sinful we are today some commandments will come home to you okay very very nicely they will come home to you the problem is this no it says what did you do to that fellow unintentionally you killed right what happened to those fellows who are intentionally killing how many of you sinned intentionally in this church oh the rest are all unintentional sinners why are you half okay how many of you intentionally knowingly deliberately premeditatedly sinned ah what about you then what hope for you what hope for you my dear brothers okay let us see <laughs> what hope there is by god's word god's word at last my sin you know why we teach the word of god so that you will learn what your sin exactly <laughs> you will learn what is sin you will learn the righteous requirements of god you will learn it are you telling me aha no 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 you will come it will come to it will come home to you and in what happens next you will tremble at the law and that's exactly what happens to faithful he is what is he doing he is running for his life he is fleeing he is fleeing actually you know what Uh, in fact he tells in that story he says you know what who was behind me moses was behind me <laughs> and moses moses comes and gives him three four whacks okay and then he cries out lord help me and then jesus comes and saves him from moses <laughs> beautiful actually john bunyan spilgrim's progress okay they they told him no if you don't bring me out of prison i will dream you know he threatened the establishment if you don't bring me out of prison i will dream and if i have dream you'll get to dream progress finished over okay till my guilty soul imploring turn to calvary so what what is the city of refuge so what should we do he has to run to the city of refuge let's go back to joshua chapter 20 so they appointed kedesh in galilee in the mountains of naphtali shechem in the mountains of ephraim Kiriath Arba, which is Hebron in the mountains of Judah, notice all are where on the mountains. Okay, flee to the mountains. I look up to the hills when, from whence comes my help. It is not. It is not just mountain. It is mountains. Notice that. Okay, today we will look at what mountains means. Okay, and on the other side of Jordan by Jericho eastward, they assign Bethzer in the wilderness of plain on the plain. Okay, so this is plain on the other side because those fellows are on the other side of Jordan. They are they'll easily more easily fall into sin. So there are plains there and mountains on the side. Okay, we'll come to that later on. Beth Sar in the wilderness of on the plain from the tribe for the from the tribe of Reuben. Ramoth in Gilead from the tribe of Gad and Golan in Bashan from the tribe of Manasseh. What is this? These are all the cities of refuge. But you know what does what does the Bible say? We have also fled to the place in the holies, our place of refuge. Who is our place of refuge? Let us see. Let us see. As I said, you should see Jesus everywhere, right? Look at what it says. These are the cities appointed for all the children of Israel, and for the stranger, and for the sojourner. Both. anybody from the children of israel sojourn or also is there that whoever killed a person accidentally might flee there and not die by the hand of the avenger of blood until he stood before the congregation the point is whom did we kill we killed him we killed him the holy one of israel so what does kadesh mean holy what does shechem mean shoulder what does hebron mean fellowship what does besed mean a fortress what does ramoth mean heights what does golan mean joy look at the bible over here how beautiful it is god sent his holy one holy one and the righteous one so that if you believe in him and you rest on him what can you have you can have fellowship with the father and those who rest on him he is a mighty fortress to them 
because they are all seated in the heights and they have what everlasting joy that is that is essentially the gospel so let us see what is the, what the word holy one means holy one means kadesh means holy one look at what it says in acts chapter 3 the god of abraham isaac and jacob the god of our fathers glorified his servant jesus whom you have delivered up and denied in the presence of pilate when he was determined to let him go he was determined who pilate was determined to let him go but you what did you do you denied the holy one and the just and asked for a murderer to be granted to you and you what killed the prince of life you killed so the avenger of blood is after you you kill the holy one you kill the holy one you know there's a, a hymn called um, at the cross at the cross where i first saw the light one of the stanzas says well might the sun in darkness hide well might the sun in darkness hide and shut its glories in well might the sun in darkness hide and shut its glories in when christ the mighty maker died for man the creature sin you know what it says what the how the hymn writer is saying when the holy one and the righteous one the creator of the whole universe when he was dying on the cross the entire creation even the inanimate objects like the sun and the moon they said you know what we cannot see this injustice happening to our creator so what will we do we will hide ourselves because our maker is dying in the hands of unjust men and that's what that's what the hymn writer says you know he says well might the sun in darkness hide and shut its glories in when the christ the mighty maker died for man the creature's sin and then you know what the hymn writer says at the cross at the cross where i first saw the light my the burdens of my heart were rolled away for there by faith i received my sight and now i'm happy all the day you killed the princess prince of life who is a prince what does a prince word prince mean he is the author of life he is the author he is the author of life and you killed him you killed him the holy one then what's the next word shekem so what is matthew chapter 11 we know this right come to me all you who what labor and are heavy laden you are having guilt because what you have done to god come to me you didn't you do not know it that's what paul tells to timothy he says you know what i did it because i did it ignorantly and in unbelief and i obtained mercy from god i did it ignorantly and i did it in un unbelief so i obtained mercy from god come to me all you who labor and are heavy laden and i will give you rest take my yoke upon you and learn from me for i am gentle and lowly in heart and you will find what rest to your souls it's amazing no the gospel is very simple you are under the heavy load of guilt in your life come to him come to him and confess your sins you know what will happen he will give you what rest he will give you rest very straight forward come to him many of the many of many people who come to church they still haven't been born again because they they still really haven't come to him So if there is anybody who is sitting here and you are really under the burden of guilt you are burdened by sin burdened by sin him writer says no long my imprisoned spirit lay fast bound in sin and nature's night fast bound in sin and nature's night thine i refuse diffuse the king the quickening ray i woke the dungeon filled with light my chains fell off my heart was free i rose went forth and followed thee amazing love how can it be that thou my god should die for me he died for you on calvary so that you could have rest come to him this morning come to him and say lord this is what i did ignorantly many of the things ignorantly this is what i did lord take me and forgive me and he will take away the burden from off your shoulder it's very simple straight forward but so many of us don't really take it to heart we still haven't come to him we still want to do things we still want to earn our salvation we are like that person no the the the, the uh the prodigal son he says i want to become one of one like one of your what hired servants why does he want to become like one of the hired servants so that he can work and pay for his salvation Look, look look at the pride of this guy 
I don't want anything free, pa, Father. I will earn and I will pay for installments. I will pay off your debt. Make, like, make me like one of your hired servants. You know what there's a saying in Telugu? Chinta chachina pulpu chawadal. The tamarind has dead, but is dead, but the, the citrus nature of tamarind is not dead. The fellow has absolutely come to the rock bottom and still having fright. Okay, I will not become a burden to my father. I will earn and I will give back. What can you give back? You know what you can give back? Only interest. The principal will still be there for the rest of your life. That's what happens, that's what happens to many people when they buy apartments and uh, property on, on what we call as mortgage. For the rest of their lives, what are they paying? Interest. And you go to the bank, how much of my loan has been uh, written off? Sir, till now you have paid only 75% of your interest. Another 20 years, uh, you will finish your interest. And then when am I going to say, pay off the principal? Oh, we don't know, sir. When people buy apartments for 30 lakh rupees. By the time they finish their mortgage, they would have paid almost like 60 lakh rupees on the property. What, what are we paying? Interest. What can you pay back to God? <laughs> what can I give back to God? Can I, the whole sacrifices in this universe, can I appease God with the sacrifices? Impossible. Impossible. All you will be paying is interest. That is the reason why the blood of bulls and goats cannot buy your salvation. You know why? It's a debt which cannot be written off. What you did against God. Impossible. The rest of your life, <laughs> you'll only be signing the contract, not even paying the interest. Only signing. Tomorrow I will pay, tomorrow I will pay, tomorrow I will pay, that tomorrow never comes. What is happening? It is only, the interest is only increasing. You know, that is the reason why the people, the people who started the compound interest, you know who started the compound interest? Jewish people. They got it from God. <laughs> I, I am the person who invented the principle of compound interest. Because I am going to compound the interest on your sin so that you will have no other way to escape from the sin except the cross. Except the cross. What can you pay back? So therefore he says, he says, come to me. How many of you are indebted? If you know what it is to be under debt, you'll know what it is. No? When you pay off your debts, bah, you take freedom. No? To, to get up in the morning. To get up in the morning to know that even your brew that you drink coffee that you drink, if you are in, in debt, that can be taken away from you. Okay. So that is the reason why, if you are poor and if you are not in debt, you are rich. You are rich, my dear brothers. That is the reason why the cry of many people in the church is, get me out of debt, get me out of debt, get me out of debt. What are they paying? Interest. <laughs> Only interest. That is what we call as a serpent's bite. The bite of the serpent. What is it? Interest. Usury. The whole world lies on usury. So he said, come to me, Baba. Your money, your bank account, that is the reason why he says, who can ransom a man's soul? Who can ransom? The price of his redemption is something which cannot be cancelled off. Somebody said, you know, what, what is salvation? Salvation, they, somebody said, is when an unstoppable force meets an immovable object. That is salvation. When unstoppable wrath of God, when the unstoppable wrath of God is cancelled off by the immovable mercy of God on the cross. And what happens? You and I are saved. Unstoppable force, immovable object. Understand that. Shechem is a place where you come and say, Lord, take my interest and pay it off, Lord, and pay off. What? what interest? I'm going to credit into your account. What? What is righteousness? The righteousness of what? Of Christ, that means the entire bank balance of heaven is in your account. In infinity minus uh, 20? Infinity. Infinity minus 1 million? Infinity. Infinity minus 1 billion? Infin that is the reason why it is infinity. Ramanujan didn't know infinity. Only God knows infinity. Because he took the infinite punishment of God upon himself. It was God who was crucified on the cross. It was God who was cancelling out the wrath of God on the cross and taking away the burden of your sin. Shechem is a city of refuge, my dear brothers and sisters, fulfilled by the, in the Messiah. So that you, are, you, can, you, you and I can, can have what? Fellowship with God. 
Fellowship with God, 1 John chapter 1, that which was from the beginning, which we have heard, which we have seen with our eyes, which we have looked upon, and our hands have handled concerning the word of life, the life was manifested, and we have seen and bear witness and declare to you that eternal life, which was with the Father, was manifested. What life? Eternal life, meaning eternal bank balance. It will never go out. What is eternal life? If you live for 90, let's say 80 years, not 90 years, 80 years, hopefully, 3 score plus 10, if by reason of strength, 10 more, 4 score years, 80 years. What is happening every day when you live? One, one, one day is getting cancelled from your account. But what is eternity? No cancellation. No cancellation at all. And declare to you that eternal life which was in, with the Father and was manifested to us. That which we have seen and heard, we declare to you. That you also may have what? Fellowship with us. And truly, our fellowship is with the Father and with his Son, Jesus Christ. So you can come today, this morning. Just confess your sins. No. Why will you not confess your sins? If this is available. So salvation is very free. It is very easy. It has to be very accessible. Let, 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 we'll come to that later on. So what is Hebron? It's fellowship. 1 Peter chapter 3 verse 18. For Christ also suffered once for, the, for sins. The just for the unjust. So that, so that he might bring us to God. Being put to death in the flesh. But made alive in the spirit. That is Hebron. You can have fellowship with God. And the third city is, or fourth city is called the city of, it's called fortress. What is it? It's a fortress. Now once, once you are inside the city and it's a fortress, nobody can touch you. There is therefore now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. You see, you know what, what, what it says in the city of refuge? As long as a guy is within the city of refuge, nobody can touch him. The moment he goes out even accidentally from the city of refuge, like uh, who? Shimei. <laughs> Finished. His blood will be upon his own head. So as long as you are in Christ, no condemnation. What happens? Psalm, Psalm 18. It says, Psalm 18, we love you, O Lord. Uh, I will love you, O Lord, my strength. The Lord is my rock and my fortress, my deliverer, my God, my strength in whom I will trust, my shield and the horn of my salvation. I will call upon the Lord who is worthy to be praised. So shall I be saved from my enemies. In this case, the law is my enemy. It's not your friend. The law is not your friend. So Bezer means fortress where God fortifies you in Christ so that the enemy cannot touch you. And therefore, when Balak is trying to, Balaam is trying to curse uh, J J Jacob, what does he say? I don't see any iniquity in jo Jacob. There is no divination against Israel. No divination. No divination is possible against, no curse, no divination is possible against Israel. He's a fortress for us. The last one. He's what? Sorry, fifth one. Sixth one, rather fifth one. Ramoth means heights. It is just not what? Height, it is heights. You know what that heights means? Height, height in, uh, uh, in whenever you see the Hebrew, it is very tall. You know what they say? It is tall, tall. It is very high. You know what they say? It is high, high. You know what Jesus did to us? He placed us very high. Where? Ah, exactly. Ephesians chapter 1. And what is the exceeding greatness power, greatness of his power to us, to us word who believe according to the working of his mighty power, which he wrought in Christ when he raised him from the dead and set him at his right hand. Where? In the heavenly places. Far above all principality and power and might and dominion and every name that is named. Not only in this world, but also in that which is to come. And it says, but God who is rich in mercy... For his great love, Ephesians chapter 2, verse 4. For his great love wherewith he loved us, even when we were dead in our sins, hath quickened us together with, by, uh, to, together with Christ Jesus, by grace you are saved, and hath raised up together and made us sit together. Where? In heavenly places. In Christ Jesus. Far above every principality. Far above every condemnation. Far above every word that the enemy can throw at you. Where are you? Right there, up on the top of the mountain. Heights. <laughs> that is Ramoth. Rama means height. Ramoth means Rama is not our Rama. Our Rama is sleeping. That is the reason why we say no. Kausalya, Supraja, Rama Sandhya, Purva, Pravardhate. What does it mean? Oh, son of Kausalya, Rama, 
Sandhya Purva, the morning is come. Please get up and do your morning, morning ablutions. Uthishtana Rasar Dhula, Kartavyam Daiva Manikam, everybody is waiting for you. Please get up from your sleep. But our God, where ours, I look up to the hills from whence cometh my help, my help cometh from the Lord, who the, the maker of heaven and the earth. My Lord does not sleep nor slumber. And even when he came, as in the flesh, morning by morning, he awakened him. Not to finish his ablutions, but to minister to God. Kartavyam daiva manikam. You are a daiva. <laughs> and this is your kartavyam. Who is reminding? Kartavyam. Kartavyam. The praja is reminding the, the raja of his kartavyam. The people are reminding the king of his responsibility. Sri Venkata Chalapati is our Surabhatam. Why? Because Venkata Chalapati is always in the sleep mode like this. Sorry, all my Hindu brothers, but uh, I have to tell you like that. That in ages to come, he might show the exceeding riches of his kindness towards us. Where is he? He's seated in the heavenlies. What did he do? He took us and he placed us there in the heavenly places and he said, sit down with me now. Who can touch you? Which principality, which power of darkness can touch you today? Ramoth. Ramoth. Rama, Ramoth. Rama is the singular, Ramoth is plural. Because of this, Golan, you have what? Rejoicing. Romans chapter 5. For if we, when we were enemies, we were reconciled to God through the death of his son, much more having been reconciled, we shall be saved by his life. And not only that, we also <laughs> rejoice in God. Why? Through our Lord Jesus Christ, by whom we have what? The reconciliation, redemption, atonement. Rejoice in God. And therefore, you know what Paul says? What does he say? Ah, but we'll, before we look at rejoicing, how do we get that rejoicing? Luke's Gospel, chapter 90. No. And then Jesus came to the place. He looked up. <laughs> one guy was on one height. <laughs> first of all, he brought him down first. Come here, Zacchaeus. Zacchaeus, Zacchaeus, come here. Okay. I have to come and what? Dwell in your house. Zacchaeus, make haste. Come down for today. I might stay in your house. And he made haste and came down. And he received him what? What? Joyfully. Did you see that? Joyfully. And when they saw it, they all complained saying, he has gone to be a guest with a man who is a sinner. Zacchaeus stood and said to the Lord, look Lord, half my goods I give to the poor. And if I have taken anything from anyone by false accusation, what will I do? I will restore fourfold. You know, just before, before, previous chapter, Luke's gospel chapter 18, the disciple says, when they should look, look, the, look at the rich young ruler, who then can be Saved, you know what Jesus says? What is impossible with man is possible with God. That's exactly what happened here. And Jesus said, today salvation has come to this house because he also is a son of Abraham. And you know what? Rejoicing. When the Levite was asked to, by, who was Matthew the Levi? Levi, come and follow me. What did he do? He immediately left everything and he followed him and he did, did what? He give a, gave a huge feast and everybody was having a gala time. Joy, rejoicing. Rejoicing, my dear brothers. You should be feasting in our home. That's exactly what happens, right? When the, when, the, when the prodigal returns home, let there be rejoicing. Let there be singing. When one sinner repents, you know what people, one, somebody was, one, one man of God saying, when the gospel is being preached, the angels are on their edge on Titla like this. Are, if this fellow repents, we'll jump for joy. They're literally on the edge. When is he going to repent? When is he going to repent? And if he repents, my goodness, he is going to jump and there's going to be celebration in heaven. Once in a while. What is going to happen? Here people who see those people who are repenting will join the heavenly hosts in the celebration. They are rejoicing. Why? Because you are where? In Christ. You know what therefore Peter says or Paul says in Philippians chapter 4 verse 4? Rejoice where? In the Lord. How many times? Always. Just in case you forgot. And again I say rejoice. Just in case you forgot. Rejoice in the Lord. You see? 
You come to him because he is the holy one who died for you. He was killed for you. You killed him actually. But if you come to him, you will find rest for your souls. And because you have rest for your souls, you have fellowship with God. And because and what, why the, the reason why you have fellowship with God? Because he becomes a fortress for you. There's no condemnation against you. He's made you sit together with heavenlies in the, in the heavenlies in, with Christ Jesus. And because of that, what do you have? You have a life of rejoicing. Not happiness. Rejoicing. Righteousness, peace and joy. In this world you will have trouble. But be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. Okay. All this is for the person who accidentally killed. No. But what about us who deliberately sinned? Is there hope for me? If there is hope for me, why should there be a hope for me? Let's read. And this is the case of the manslayer who flees there that he may live. What is the case? Whoever kills his neighbor unintentionally, not being hated, not having hated him in time past, and as when a man goes to the woods and his neighbor to cut timber and his axe swings a stroke with the axe to cut down the tree and the head slips from the handle and strikes his neighbor so that he dies. He shall flee to one of the cities that he may live. You know, this is talking about actually us preachers, basically. So many times, what do preachers do? They are swinging the axe. And because of that, what is happening? The axe is coming and hitting people and they are dying. That's what in Ezekiel, son of man, I made you a what? A watchman. What are you supposed to do? You have to hear from me and swing the axe. So that you lay the axe where? Uh, at the root, not at the head. So what, what do people do? They swing the axe. Oh, Jesus is a loving savior. He will forgive any kind of a sin. Fantastic. All, is, all that is true. Okay. He is, you are his, his righteousness forever. Present sin, past sin, future sin, forever sin. You don't have to ask for repentance. He, you, once you have come to Jesus, everything is honky dory. What are they doing? Swinging the axe and hitting the people. There are other kinds of believer, uh, preachers. You know what they will do? They will only talk about the sternness of God. Sinners! Under the wrath of God, repent! You are going to die. Oh my goodness, where is the hope for that fellow? What is he doing? He is also singing. One, people, one person only specializes in the goodness of God. The other person specializes in the, in the severity of God. Where is the person in the middle? What are you doing? Swinging the axe. You know what God, Paul says? I preach to you the whole counsel of God. I don't have anybody's blood on my hands. The avenger of blood is not after me. But even if, even if he's after me, my hands are clean. Okay, but let's move on. Lest the avenger of blood, while his anger is hot, pursues the manslayer and overtake him. Because the way is long. So where should the city of refuge be? Very close. Very, very, very close. He should not be very far. In other words, he should have the sufficient strength to overtake the horse. Ante. He knew his guilt. That fellow, by the time he is on the horse, this fellow is in the city of refuge. Because otherwise, what will happen? The horse will overtake him. So that means what? It has to be very close. Romans chapter 10. You know this verse very well. For Moses writes about the righteousness which is of the law. The man who does those things shall live by them. But the righteousness of faith speaks in this way. Do not say in your heart who will ascend into heaven. That is to bring Christ down from heaven. Who will descend into the abyss. That is to bring Christ up from the dead. But what does it say? The word is near you. Not very far. It's near you. Very near what do you have to do? You have to what? Confess with your mouth and believe in your heart. That's all. And what will happen to you? You will be. For all those who call upon the name of the Lord will be what? Will be saved and they will not be put to shame. The city of refuge is very close. That if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you will be saved. Okay. Understand? It's very close. So this morning, if you're very simple, 
Just confess. He who hides his sin will not prosper, but if he confesses and forsakes it, you will obtain what? Mercy. But the point is not that today, no. Today I want to look at something very more serious. This is unintentional. What about you and I who have done intentional sins? Look at what it says. But if anyone hates his brother, lies in wait for him, rises against him, strikes him mortally, so that he dies. And what does he do? He flees to one of these cities. Then the elders of the city shall send and bring him from there and deliver him over to the avenger of the blood that he may die. Your eyes shall not Pity him. You have to put him to death. Why? Because he has intentionally committed that sin. Intentional. So let us let the commandment come home. Let us give you some examples of intentional sin. Okay. Deuteronomy chapter 21. This is very, very close to my heart because I see myself here. If a man have a stubborn and a rebellious son which will not obey the voice of his father or the voice of his mother and when they have chastened him will not hearken unto them, what shall the father do? Then, the shall, then shall the, his father and his mother lay hold on him, bring him out into the elders of the city and unto the gate of his place and they shall say to the elders of the city, this son is stubborn and rebellious. He will not obey our voice. He is a glutton and a drunkard. And all the men of the city shall what? Stone him. My goodness. You know, how many of you have stubborn and rebellious children here in the house of the Lord? Stubborn and rebellious? I remember the first time I heard the gospel, no? I told you so many times. Some people, they, they need kind words to get, enter into the kingdom. Some people need a shock, knock on their heads to enter into the kingdom. I was the one of that kind. There was a preacher who came to me like this, you know, if you were in the youth camp. The Bible says, honor your father and mother. And if you dishonor father and mother, if you honor, you will live long. But if you dishonor, what will happen to you? And she was looking at us, and especially she was looking at me like this. No, I'm looking at Hannah. No, Brenda, not you, not you, okay? She was looking at me and she said, uh, some of you are rebels at home. By this time you should have died, but God is extending mercy. You know what it's what is called? Commandment came. And, and as I, I, for that, for that moment, you know, in in movies, sometimes you know what happens. This fellow is concentrating, and when he's concentrating, when he's concentrating, the movie shows the intensity of his concentration. And what happens when he's intensely concentrating? The next frame of that movie makes all the other characters disappear or freeze. So that uh, yeah, they foreground him, and the foregrounding and backgrounding, the whole focus of the entire meeting was upon me that day. Stubborn and rebellious. I'm telling you that day, you know, I was weeping like crazy. I've never ever heard somebody confronting me, you know, something. The gospel is pointed. It will come and tell you exactly what your compromise is. It will not, you know, somebody, it, it, preachers don't just preach to themselves, they preach to you. You know what Peter, Peter said to the, on the day of Pentecost? This Jesus whom you crucified. I mean, there's, we like generalities. Let us just put everybody in one bracket. No, 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 no. God is not very general. He is very, very specific. He will come and tell you, this is the problem, brother. And all the men of the city shall stone him. Okay? Commandment has come home, hopefully, for many people. What hope do I have? What hope do I have if I run to that city of refuge? Any hope? Any hope today? If you run to the city of refuge in the old covenant? Any hope for you? You intentionally murdered somebody and you know what the blood is crying out for? Vengeance. Any hope for you today? Let us look at another commandment. Deuteronomy chapter 22. 
verse 22 22 22 very easy to remember 21 21 22 22 21 22 and rebellious son 22 22 adulterous son if a man is found lying with a woman married to a husband then what both of them of them shall die the man that lay with the woman and the woman so that they shall be put to death is it unintentional no 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 very intentional adultery is not unintentional by the way it is very very well planned you planned it you know, somebody i think zach punan said somebody you know said, like said something let's just imagine a guy he has an is into an adulterous relationship with a woman okay now they have crossed the boundaries and today is the night they are going to lie with each other he is going on the scooter do you think god is going to stop him no Do you think he's going to be meet, he's going to meet with an accident he's going to die no Do you think David is going to escape God is going to stay his hand and say David cover your eyes don't look at that woman like that please You see adultery is premeditated You might have been been introduced to pornography accidentally but after a while every time you watch is intentional you know that <laughs> don't tell me it is all no 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 and intentionally i'm watching porn no no very intentional you planned out also exactly when to watch how to watch how to keep your computer in what angle so that some nobody can see you how to lock your device you might give your lock to everybody but there's one app which is always locked and for that you only you only you have the password what is that intentional isn't it not you know what should it, what should we do to that to that person it says the bible says he should be what stoned what hope for us What hope? If I run to the city of refuge, will the law save me? Will the law save me? You know that's the reason why David understood this. When Nathan came and confronted, he said, "You are that man." You know what David said? Lord, take away the blood guiltiness from my heart, Lord. Lord, take it away. I knew it. Against you and you only have I sinned, and I precisely knew what I was doing. I asked who is this person somebody came and told me is not that bersheba the wife of uriah oh what should i have done my goodness my loyal servant son my wife sorry i don't even want to look at her <laughs> but you know exactly what you were doing you know exactly what you were doing you planned it out as to how you would murder uriah you planned it out now what hope for david i mean the problem is which city of refuge could david run to which city me tell me my dear brothers and sisters where do we have hope for an intentional sinner like me intentionally so much so many of us copy in exam right intentional don't tell me you could work hard no you know 3g scam 4g scam remember 3g scam 4g scam the previous government was was uh, guilty of 3g scam and 4g scam the problem is 3g scam 4g scam is just not in the government it is say there in students also I was an invigilator in that exam in triple IT. It was a multiple choice exam with several options. One of our students, smartphone with those days 3G network, and what she, what was she doing? 3G scam. Three G scam. 
you think it was not it was accidental <laughs> no 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 don't tell me no 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 you know what 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 does what do we say in our exam when you are coming to the exam you have to keep your mobile phones off at that place don't carry your smartphones to the examination the invigilator says you go and sit there with nothing except your piece of pen, your pencil and a, and a, and, a, and a rough sheet of paper which we give you that's it nothing else oh my goodness how she was she was cheating my goodness i should have learned from her basically boy oh sir can i go for a toilet break now for women where will you stop It's toilet break we can't go with her they will do song and dance before you sir can i go to song of solid break okay madam go <laughs> don't tell me it is unintentional planned deliberate now think about it how many of us have planned our sin if it's called a sketch in in, in telugu Tele it's called sketch sketch vesi mottham plan chesi murder chesina It was a perfect plan, intentional murder. You know, when the woman was caught in adultery, look at what it says. Now, John's Gospel, chapter eight. We we excuse the woman. I understand that, but was it unintentional? Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. They said to him, "Teacher, this woman was caught in adultery in the very act." Now Moses, in the law, commanded us that such should be stoned. But what do you say? Where is the refuge? Can she run to the city of refuge, my dear teacher? What is your answer? What is your answer? You are the righteous one, right? The law says you are to stone her. She is guilty. She is caught in the act. And you murdered somebody. What is happening? Genesis chapter four. Then the Lord said to Cain, "Where is your Abel? Where is Abel, your brother? Where is he? You know what it says? He said, 'I do not know. Am I my brother's keeper?' And he said, 'What have you done? The voice of your brother's blood is crying out. What is it crying out for? Vengeance, vengeance. Should I let you go?" and what did you do you according to your premeditated counsel you did a kangaroo court kangaroo court no it's called kangaroo court what is it what is it called now today we call it media trial those days we call kangaroo court media trial email trial facebook trial twitter trial all trial found guilty who is that person who is found guilty son of son of man is found guilty you premeditated you planned it out how to how you will murder this man Don't tell me it was unintentional. Don't tell me it was unintentional. Peter is looking at them, said, "No, no, 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 no. We did it unintentionally. You are trying to put the guilt of this man upon us. No, 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 no. You, you did it intentionally, and you said, 'Let his blood be upon us and our children.' You said it. You did it intentionally. What hope for them? What hope?" Men of Israel, Acts chapter two, verse twenty-two. You see, you know what the game changer is, boy. After this, the game changer. I'm telling you, you will fall in love with my Lord. You will fall in love with my Jesus. Just wait for the climax. Men of Israel, hear these words. Jesus of Nazareth. a man attested by god to you by miracles was he attested by he was attested by god to you by miracles and signs which god did through him in your midst and you yourselves know also know him being delivered by the predetermined purpose of god you know what there is divine sovereignty but there is also what we call as human responsibility there's a doctrine of human divine sovereignty and also god is sovereign calvinist Somebody said, "No, the best thing to do with a Calvinist is to take him to a buffet." What did, what was predestined for you to choose today? Tandoori chicken, tandoori roti. <laughs> you go to the Desi restaurant in uh, in uh, in Canada or in US buffet. Calvinists can't go there. Calvinists only only think about what a la carte. 
bring me the menu let me choose na 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 buffet no no <laughs> no it was predestined by the counsel of god that i should choose tandoori chicken sorry <laughs> no no you did not know there was a tandoori chicken there it was very much there right in front of your eyes you are, and you chose tandoori because somebody said no that restaurant tandoori chicken already it was premeditated you were dreaming about tandoori it was it was salivating in your mouth the feet dragged you to the buffet restaurant and it's right there in front of you now and you chose don't say <laughs> predestination no 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 okay what says him being delivered by the determined purpose and for for knowledge of god you have taken by lawless hands have crucified and you gave him a criminal's death he was attested by god there was a rich there was a there was a was a thief who looked at him and he said this man is truly righteous we are suffering righteously and he is suffering injustice there was a there was a soldier roman soldier right there that that guy was hardened who saw blood all his life who murdered people who killed people whose conscience is dead and he looks at the son of god and he says truly this was a man of god you truly this was a son of god but don't tell me my dear brothers therefore it was you are guiltless of his sin don't tell me pilot himself said i wash my hands but what did you say let his blood be upon me you have crucified see if that is the case what is the blood of jesus doing as should do if that is the case what should the blood of jesus do what should the blood of jesus do what should it cry for vengeance but that is only half no that is just only half the story right the other side is amazing you know what the other side is you put him to death god raised him hallelujah god raised him if he was dead and gone then his blood would cry for vengeance because god raised him from the dead you have forgiveness for your intentional sin do you know that do you know that do you know that resurrection that is the reason why living he loved me dying he saved me buried he took my sins far away rise rising he justified freed me forever one day he is coming back oh glorious day you know our children are learning the song saved 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 since the savior found me i have perfect rest living in the realms of joy and happiness looking for i'm mean, leaning on my savior looking for that day when he shall come to catch his waiting bride away saved 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 i'm happy all the way saved 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 i love him more each day saved 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 i know he's my nichar he saved and what is that justifies and cleanses me by his power <sighs> what a so why he raised him. why having lose the pains of death because it was impossible that he should be held by it if he would have died god would be unjust that is how he becomes just and the justified by raising him from the dead that is the reason why what is sunday the day of resurrection hallelujah that is the reason we should have a slip your skip on your you know remember it? walking and limping and praising god not coming and drowsing and sleeping in the presence of god no Acts chapter three. But you denied the holy and the just one. Asked for a what? Murder to be granted to you, and killed the prince of life, whom God raised him from the dead. And what? We are witnesses for that. We are witnesses. Why is this important, my dear brothers and sisters? Why is the resurrection the game changer? So that the avenger of blood cannot even touch the intentional sinner, like David. and deliver him from blood guiltiness why why you know why 
look at what it says in 1st Corinthians chapter 15 so when this corruptible shall put on no sorry not before that we look at we'll come back to this now if Christ is preached that he has been raised from the dead how do some of you say that he is not there's no resurrection of the dead but if there is no resurrection of the dead then Christ is not risen and if Christ is not risen then our preaching is empty and your faith is also empty Yes, and we are found what? False witnesses of God because we have testified that what? God raised him from the dead and then whom he did not raise up if in fact dead do not rise. If the dead do not rise then Christ is not risen. And if Christ is not risen your faith is futile and you are still in your sins. Where is the option for us to be delivered from our intentional sin? Where? Where? You know what the law can do? You intentionally sinned. What will it do to you? Stone you to death. You know what God, grace does? You intentionally dead. You intentionally sinned. I will kill him. But you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to raise him from the dead. That way I will be just and the justifier of you who intentionally sinned and who have blood on your hands. You know something? A lot of people, they have blood on their hands and they are under the heavy penalty of guilt in their hearts. You know what God says to you today, my dear brother and my sister? Come to my Jesus. Come to my Jesus. He took away that sin. Even your intentional sin. I remember when we were in YFC those days, YFC used to organize a camp called camp, uh, Crossfire. And Crossfire used to be one of the most fired up uh, places during, in, in YFC days. You know, used to, we used to have all kinds of fantastic preachers. And there was one preacher, when, well, the first Crossfire which I attended. And the preacher was shouting at all these young people. You know? He was saying, young people, I know many of you are fornicators over here. Are fornicators over here. I know many of you are fornicators. You have slept with a girl. And one of you has come to me and confessed. And that you got a girl pregnant before a time. I know it. But come to Jesus today. Come to Jesus today. Come to Jesus. Come to Jesus. He will forgive you. He will cleanse you of your sin. If you truly come to him this morning. Come to him. Come to me. Your blood. The guilt of your blood can be taken away. He will remove it. He will remove it. You know why? He rose Jesus from the dead. Then also those who have fallen asleep in Christ have perished. Why? If in this life only we have hope in Christ Jesus, of all the people we are what? Most pitiable because there is no redemption for our sins. But God raised him from the dead. Why? Serpent has a sting. Serpent says you have to pay God with interest with the principle. Right? First Corinthians chapter 15. The sting of death is sin. And the strength of sin is the law. And what does the law say? If you have intentionally sinned, you have to be put to death. But you know what God did? God put him to death on the cross. And raised him from the dead. So that you can go free. But thanks be to God, which giveth us victory through, Lord, through our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, my beloved brethren, be steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord. For as much as you know, your labor is not in vain. And you know what it says? Same chapter. 1 Corinthians chapter 15. So when, sorry. So when corruptible shall have put on incorruption, and this mortal shall have put on immortality, then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written, death is swallowed up in victory. O death, where is thy sting? O grave, where is thy victory? Where is thy victory? You know why? <laughs> Christ was raised from the dead. And where the law stopped, you know where the law stops? Christ begins. We stop. That's the reason we have a beautiful, there's one guy called um, uh, Guram Joshua. You know what Guram Joshua said? He wrote a series of poems called Smasana Vatika. Smasana Vatika means graveyard. You know what he says? Everybody, doesn't matter if he's a king, he's a pauper, he's a prince, he's, a, he's, a, he's, a, he's an artist, he's a writer, everybody should come to this masanam and he has to die. That's it. You know what? Bible says, where man ends, where religion ends, where the law ends, Christ begins. Christ begins. Christ begins. And all your intentional sin, all the sin that you have committed against God intentionally, like the way David said, Lord, against you and you only have a sin. You know what God does? He puts it on Jesus and he lets you go. Why? 
He is just. And by raising him from the dead, he becomes the justifier of all of us. And therefore, intentional rebels like me, <laughs> fornicators and adulterers like us, murderers in heart like us, intentional murderers in heart like us, we have hope, <laughs> my dear brothers. We have hope. We have hope. So what did I title today's sermon? Hallelujah, what a savior. <laughs> Hallelujah, what a savior. Hallelujah, what a savior. You know, it says, guilt, guilty, vile, and, guilty, vile, and helpless we. Guilty, vile, and helpless we. Spotless lamb of God was he. Guilty, vile, and helpless we. Spotless lamb of God was he. Full atonement. Can it be? Full atonement. Can it be? Can I become one with God with all my guilt and my shame and my corruption and my, and my guilt and my murder and my strife and my anger? Can I be fully reconciled with God? How can it be? And you know what he says? Hallelujah. What a savior. Hallelujah, what a savior. You know that song, you know, I, I, I teach the children the songs. Whenever I teach the sing, my, all the children's songs, especially hymns, I experience them personally. I really enjoy them personally. The, word, the, the song which I taught them, saved, saved, saved. Now it's become their, almost they sing, they sing in their, in the, even in their sleep, they sing that song. You know what it, that, that song says? Saved, saved. Why, why, why are we just not saved? We are what? Saved? Saved? Saved. They are three, three times saved. God has saved us from the penalty of sin. God has saved us from the power of sin. And God has saved us from the presence of sin. So we are saved, saved, saved. Three times. So what do we do? You know what do we do? We just sing this hymn and we say, Oh, the love that drew salvation's plan. Oh, the grace that brought it down to man. Oh, the mighty gulf that God did span. Where? At Calvary. You see, he died and he was risen from the dead. He just did not die. He rose from the dead. And therefore, you know what? Our guilt is taken away. God can give us a clear conscience. Those people, their sins are only what? Covered. Our sins are just not covered. They are not even remembered. Our conscience is absolutely clear with God and with man, even our blood guiltiness. God did not forget David's sin. Even when he was writing the genealogy of David, Jesus, you know what he says? Solomon, the son of David, whom he had with, what? Beersheba Kadu, Uriah's son. Why? Very clear. Very, very clear. And in that same genealogy, Rahab the harlot is not mentioned. Rahab is mentioned. That's it. All her past life is gone. You know what, what happened at Calvary? My intentional sin was taken. And you know something? So many times we feel guilty, right? Because we have sinned deliberately. We knew this is right and we sinned against light. Where is hope for us if not at Calvary? Where is hope? So what does Hebrews chapter 6 say this morning? Hebrews 6 says, I'm going to put it for you, that by two immutable things in which it is impossible for God to lie, we have a strong consolation and where have we done? We have fled. Now in city of our refuge is Jesus himself now. And even if you have sinned intentionally, you know what, we can come back to Jesus this morning. Come back to Jesus. Come back to Jesus. Lord, this is what you, your law says. This is what I did. This is what I planned. This is what I premeditated. And now, Lord, I am under the heavy guilt of my sin. I do not know where to go. Now Jesus says, come to me. Come to me. Run to me. Flee to me. This morning. And you will have hope. So this morning, I want uh, Peter to come this morning and let us sing the song. His blood 
is the better than the blood of Abel. No, remember what can wash away our sins? What can make us whole again? Nothing but the blood. Nothing but the blood of Jesus. And we can all stand. And I would ask you to take this opportunity in the presence of the Lord. If there is people here in this house this morning who have sinned deliberately against light, this is a day of new beginnings. Eighth day of the eighth month. Kya baat hai? Is there any? Is this a coincidence? Eighth day of the eighth month, you can have what? Freedom. What can wash? I'll just put it on the screen. Nothing. Yes, Peter, your blood speaks a better word than all the empty claims. This morning, just stand and confess. Heard upon this earth speaks righteousness for me, stands in my defense. It's always as it's your blood. The blood of Jesus speaks on our behalf this morning. It's not like the blood of Abel who cries for vengeance. The blood of Jesus can cry for mercy because God raised him from the dead. And you can flee to him this morning. Don't harden your hearts. Wherever you are, whoever is listening, in whichever part of the world, tell the Lord and say, Lord, I come back to you. I flee to you, O Lord. I realized that I cannot save myself. So many times I've sinned against light. I knew too much. But deliberately in my rebellion against, I sinned against you. I presumed so many times upon your goodness. And I sinned against you. I want to come back to you a lot this morning. Confess this morning everybody in your hearts. Don't have to come here or any place. Just in your own seats, in your own ways. In your own words, say, Lord. Your blood speaks a better word than all the empty claims I've heard upon this earth. Speaks righteousness for me, stands in my defense. Jesus is your blood. Oh, it's your blood. And what can wash away my What can make us whole? What can make us whole again? Nothing but your blood. Nothing but your blood. Of Jesus, and what can wash us pure as snow to be welcomed as the friends of God? Nothing but your blood, oh, nothing but your blood. King Jesus. God only says one thing. He says, come, let us reason together, says the Lord. I'll reason with you. The philosophers of this world will say, it may be that God will forgive sin, but I do not know how. That's all philosophies and the, of this world can do. The Socrates of this world, the Aristotles of this world can only do one thing and they can condemn us as sinners, guilty. 
But there's only one God who can say, I'm merciful. I'm just. On the cross, I punished my son for you. My unstoppable wrath and the force of my anger was consumed by the immovable love of God in my son. And that is the reason why Paul says, God in Christ Jesus was reconciling the world to himself. And we in the new covenant, preachers and teachers of the word of God are called ministers of reconciliation and we beg and we implore this morning with all of those here hearing us, be reconciled to God. Don't let your guilt stop you. Don't let your failures stop you. God is merciful. He is kind. He says, though your sins are as scarlet, I will make them as white as snow. Because there is a fountain, even now, filled with blood, being drawn from Emmanuel's veins. And every sinner, intentional and unintentional, who take a plunge in that flood, all their guilty stains will be removed. There could be Lady Macbeths who are watching the murders they have done in their hands and they said, who can rid me of this blood guilt? My Jesus can. My Jesus can. Because we killed him. But God raised him. That's how David says, Lord, purge me with his sup. Because Christ was the Passover lamb. The spotless, holy Passover lamb. Slaughtered. Slaughtered for us. God asked Abraham to stay his hand on his son. But when the eternal wrath of God was falling upon his own son, he did not stay his hand because he was looking at me. 2,000 years later, who will hear the gospel in a youth camp and he will realize the guiltiness of my sin, the guilt caused by my sin, that I am guilty intentional. And when I cried out to mercy, he forgave me and he gave me a clear conscience. This morning, there's a blood of Jesus which speaks a better word than the blood of Abel. And the blood has never lost its power. Whatever be the enormity of your crime, whether they be intentional, whether it be unintentional this morning, come to him, my dear brothers and sisters. Say, Lord, I, I confess. I repent. Sinners plunge beneath that flood. Lose all their guilty stains. Lose all their guilty stains. Hallelujah, what a savior. Man of sorrows, can it be? What a name to give to the Son of God. Helpless sinners to reclaim. Hallelujah, what a Savior. This morning, come to him, my dear brothers and sisters. Start afresh. For if any man is in Christ, he is a new creation. He is the Holy One of God. Scripture says what the law could not do in that it was weak through the flesh God has done by sending his son in the likeness of sinful flesh and for our sin he condemned him in his flesh so that the righteous requirement of the law can be fulfilled in us who do not walk according to the flesh but according to the spirit and there is therefore now no condemnation and we can save the hymn writer. No condemnation now I dread. 
Jesus and all in him is mine. Alive in him, my living head and clothed in righteousness divine. Bold I approach the eternal throne and claim the crown through Christ my own. Amazing love, how can it be that thou my God should die for me? This morning, come back to my dear brothers and sisters. If any man is in Christ, he is a new creation. Absolutely new. You can have a fresh start with God. Even in the eighth month of this year, you, were, you, would, you can say, Lord, I've wasted eight months, Lord. Seven months are gone, Lord. What hope for me? I've sinned and sinned and sinned against light. Deliberately sometimes, premeditatedly sometimes, Lord, what is there hope for me? God says, yes, there is hope this morning for you, my dear brother. My dear, sin, my dear guilty, poor sinner, come to him this morning. Come to him this morning. And experience his love like the way I experienced and you experienced the very first time at the cross. At the cross. Yes, Peter, what can wash away our sins, Lord? What can wash Everybody can sing this away morning. our sins? And what, what can, can make us whole again? Nothing but the Nothing but your blood. Nothing but your blood. Jesus. What can wash us white? What can wash us pure as snow to be welcome? Welcome as a friend of God. Nothing but your blood. But your blood, King Jesus. This Lord, this morning, we come to you in the name of Jesus. You are an awesome God. Who can take away our guilt, Lord? Who can take away my guilt? Only you, only you, Lord. All the saviors of the world, they only deceive us. But you save deceivers like us. What an awesome God. And therefore this morning we come to you, O oh Lord. We humble ourselves before you and lay, we say, Lord, grant us the gift of repentance. And Lord, we will flee from the wrath to come. And we will flee to that place of refuge behind the veil in the holiest place where God has given access by the blood and the body of a son which he rent on the cross. And who raised us, raised him from the dead so that we, we, we can plunge ourselves in that flood and lose all our guilty stains. I pray, Father, for every brother and sister who is mourning for their sin and saying, Lord, is there hope for me? Lord, there is hope only in you, O oh Lord. There is hope only in you this morning. Wherefore, we come to you. We want to experience your love, Lord. We want to experience your love, Jesus. We don't want to pretend that we are not guilty of intentional sin. We intended to sin. We presumed upon your goodness. And therefore, this morning, we ask you to forgive us, Lord. Reconcile us to yourself this morning and grant us a fresh start, a new beginning, O oh Lord. A new beginning, O oh Lord, because you said in your word, Behold, I make all things new and make it new, Father, for many of your children this morning who are under the weight of sin, who are dragging themselves to church, who have lost the skip in their legs this morning. Bring them back to you, O oh Lord. Let them experience that flood and let them experience the guilt being taken away. Let them experience the salvation of the living God. Hallelujah to the love of God. Bless them, Lord, this morning. For you said in your word, blessed is a man whose transgression is forgiven, whose sin is covered, unto whom the Lord does not impute iniquity, and in whose spirit there is no guile. Find, O oh Lord Jesus, this morning, in your people, a safe haven for your word. Comfort your people this morning. Let them come to the cross and cling to it. And let them experience a guilt-free life 
and let them walk with newness of life this morning and testify to this word and say he raised him from the dead and I am his witness hallelujah we thank you Lord we praise you we give you glory for in Jesus mighty name we pray Amen. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of the Father, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit rest and abide with each one of us. Amen. 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 May the Lord richly bless you. Have a nice and a blessed Your blood week. Has washed away. Thank you. The Father's right, completely satisfied. Jesus, thank your blood, your blood has washed away my sin jesus thank you the father's right completely satisfied jesus thank you once your enemy now seated at your table jesus thank you Say what a savior, okay? Hallelujah! What a savior! Hallelujah! A savior. Amen. Be blessed this week. Hallelujah.